Hey everybody and welcome back. Well, we're going to be doing some animation today. I got this uh, request uh, quite a few times and we're going to do the famous uh, bouncing ball animation. All right, here we go. Okay guys, well, the famous bouncing ball animation. Well, first of all, before we get started, if you have experience animating, if you know about keyframing, if you know about this stuff, then skip this video, right? It's not gonna be for you. For everybody else, stick around, right? Now, um, as you can see in front of you, a lot of stuff going on there. I have the graph editor open at the bottom. You can see a bunch of keyframes, which are the red vertical lines on that little uh, slider down there. I have my perspective window uh, open. I got all sorts of stuff going on, but don't worry, I'm gonna cover all of that, right? But just for now, what I'm gonna do is simply gonna hit play on my animation so you can see what's going on, right? So you got the blue ball that's bouncing and it's basically following that image. Now, I found that image online. There are a bunch of them. I thought this one uh, worked okay. And as you can see, it does. And um, that's what I'm gonna be talking about mainly. And I'm gonna use that as a uh, educational tool, I guess. Not quite sure who made it, but if you know who did, let me know and I'll put it in the credits, okay? All right, let's stop this and jump back. So basically what we're looking at here, and I'll just get a little bit closer, is that we have a couple of things we're dealing with. We have the X, Y, and Z down here in the bottom uh, left corner of that window. So we have the height to deal with, which is our Y direction, and we have the forward movement, which is the X, okay? So these two are the ones that we're dealing with. Now, as we hit play, you'll see that the ball is moving in the X because it's moving to the right, and also it's reducing height, so the Y value is going down. And that's represented down here in the graph editor as well, right? What you see on the translate Y, which is the green one, you see that the height of that curve is going down, 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 and so forth until it's flat, right? And as far as the red value, you can see that it's going from left to right, so it's moving. So that all makes sense, right? So let's stop that. Now, let's look at the timing here. What you see in this uh, graph is the timing of the keyframes. Now, zero is obviously down here in the slider all the way to the left. And as we move to the right, you see that the first position where the ball hits the ground is at frame 15, right there, okay? And you can see that's where I put a keyframe. Then it goes up again, right? And it stops at frame 24 as listed in the graph. And again, I have a keyframe. Moving on to 33, up to 40, down to 47, 53, 59, and so forth and so on, right? Okay, now how is that important? Well, the thing is, if you look at this ball in real life, it will have a momentum moving to the right, so there's a certain amount of energy going on there, but you also have gravity pulling the ball down. Now, as the ball moves to the right, what you'll see is that the momentum going to the right starts to go down and down and down, right? And as a result, the arches of the ball bouncing up become lower and lower, like that, right? Now, timing-wise, you kind of need to make a schedule for yourself, and that's what I do. So what I basically do is I say, okay, so my ball is starting at this height right here, which is a Y value, okay? So when do I want it to hit the ground at the first position? 15. Now, you know that when it's, it hits the ground and goes up again, it's gonna be lower than the original position on the left there, and lower and lower. So this is almost a, di a diagonal line right there, going all over the top, right? On the floor, of course, the floor is the floor, so it's gonna be level. So what I wanna do is just start from scratch. We're gonna do a completely new scene and we're gonna recreate this, right? Now keep in mind though, that an important part of the bouncing ball animation is deformation of the ball. Now that is a little bit more intermediate than a beginner's video. So I'm not gonna do that in this video. That involves rigging the ball and so forth. I will do that in a future video, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to file, new, Okay guys, so now we have a new scene, and as you can see, it looks nothing like what we had before, right? So there are a couple of things we need to tweak here. 
Now, first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to go to the top right corner where it says workspace and instead of modeling standard, we're going to go and select animation because that's what we're doing, right? Now, we're going to get something that looks a little bit more like what we had, but not quite yet. So what we're going to do next is we're going to check what we have. We have our animation slider in the bottom here. We have our graph editor. We have our perspective view. What we're missing so far, though, is our front view. So on the left vertical column here, we're going to click on that little plus sign right there, and that will bring in our front view. So now we have front, we have perspective, we have graph editor, and we have animation slider. Okay. And then here, your channel box is open. You can leave that open or not, depending on what you want. Okay. All right. So before we do anything else, let's check our settings animation wise. So the bottom right corner, that little running guy with the cog, click on that. I got 24 frames per second. I got 24 frames per second times one as my playback speed. So we're good. Okay, so let's bring in our reference image. I'm going to go up to view, image plane, import image, and I'm doing that on my front view panel, right? Click on that. I'm going to go to my desktop, which is on my other screen, but trust me, and I'm going to click on open. There you go. All right, so here it is. And here it is from our perspective view. Okay, so before we do anything else, I want to make sure that ground level in my reference image is level to the ground level on my grid there, right? So it's selected. I'm going to hit W and I'm going to move it up like this until that black line with the black spheres is on that line. Okay, there you go. Now that we have that, it's time to create a sphere. So I'm going to go up to uh, create. We're going to go to polygon primitives and select the sphere. There we go. And I'm going to move that to the left. I'm going to move that up here and I'm going to hit R to scale that down until we roughly have the size of the ball there. Bring it up a little bit and maybe scale it down just a tad, right? Okay. Now that's our starting position. So we're going to go to edit, delete by type history and modify freeze transformation. That is basically our zero, 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 right? Now, like I said before, we're going to be moving in the X direction. We're going to move to the right and we're going to be moving in the Y direction as in moving downward as we move forward, right? So uh, if we scrub over our uh, animation slider here, you see nothing's going on just yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to push all the way to the left. So I'm on frame zero, right? Make sure you got this guy selected. And you can hit S on your keyboard to keyframe that first position, right? And as you do that, you suddenly see that these values pop up, okay? Now, S keyframes um, the whole position there. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to move forward on my animation slider to the next position. And then I'm going to move the sphere. So what I want to do is I want to move to frame 15. That's where the ball touches the floor, right? So I'm going to scrub forward until I'm at frame 15 like so and then I'm going to hit W move the ball forward and move it down until I'm happy with the position right okay so there it is so now that I'm happy that that is uh, correctly positioned on this graph right here I'm going to hit S again to keyframe that and as you can see down here you're starting to get some lines going on there and I'll explain that later right Okay, so next position is position frame 24. So I'm going to move towards 24, like so. And then we're going to hit W again. We're going to move this over here. We're going to move it up. Like that. And we're going to hit S one more time. There you go. Okay, now there are a bunch more that I need to do. I'll do two more and I'll speed things up so you don't have to wait all through them, right? Okay, so next one is 33. So we're going to scrub to 33. I'm going to push that down. Move that over. There you go. That's the keyframe that. Next one is 40. So we're going to scrub to 40. There you go. Move that forward. Bring that up. That's the keyframe, right? Now I'll time lapse the rest of them until we're done and then I'll see you guys in a sec.
All right, so there you go. So we have that all keyframed and we still have a lot of things to do, but let's just see what we got. So our animation slider down here has a range 120, 200. We're gonna set it both to 100. So that's all right, okay. And then we're gonna make sure that we get this guy turned on. So if we hit play, we'll see what happens. So we see a movement that is looks somewhat like a bounce, but it looks very off. Now the reason why it looks off is because the speed is off and the arc is off. And I'll explain that. So as we scrub back and we'll get in a bit closer here so I can show you, right? So for example, on that first one, like I explained before, you have a an energy moving to the right and you have gravity pulling it down, right? So if we scrub to the right, you'll see that it will go down like this. Now, if that were the case and it would go back up like that, you would have a whole different situation. So what we need to do is we need to tweak those. Now that's where the graph editor comes in, right? So if you go in here and we zoom out a little bit and we look at the green line here, which is our translate Y going up and down, right? You see that these are very harsh or very steep mountains, if you will, okay? Now, if we select one of these, let's say this guy right here, you'll see that you got little arms on it, little white arms. So I can take one of these and move it. But as I move it, you'll see that the other one will move as well. And I don't want that, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit Control Z to go back, and I'm gonna select all of these guys, right? So let me be careful that we don't select stuff we don't want. So select all of these, right? And then up here, you have a symbol that looks like a V. You got a white arm and a red arm, and we're gonna click on that. And what we're basically doing is we're breaking the tangents, okay? All right, guys, so we have a situation where we have this green line representing the translate Y or the vertical position, and you can see that it's pretty steep. So what we need to do with these broken tangents now is try to simulate something that looks a little bit more like a graph, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna select this guy in the bottom right there, and this one, and we're gonna start to move that up a little bit to create a situation where this is starting to become a bit rounder in the top, like so. We'll do the same here. And wait until we're up there a little bit, a bit more like so. Don't go too far. I guess that would be all right. And then we're gonna go in here and we're gonna take this guy. Oops, not that one. The second one, this guy right here. And let me just get in here a little bit, guys. It's a bit fiddly. All right, so this guy right there, and we're gonna play with that one. And you can see it's starting to arch a little bit. We'll do that. And what I'll do is I'll time lapse the rest so you get the idea until we have something that looks a little bit more like our image, right? Right guys, so now that we have that, let's get in a bit closer into our graph here and let's see if that is anything closer to our graph, right? So we're gonna scrub through that. The first one needs some work. The second one looks better. Third one looks better. And after that, they pretty much are good, right? So we're gonna go back to the first one. Let me tweak that a little bit. We're gonna take this, we're gonna move that up. Come on, let me just grab that. And let's see, that should be it. Okay, so let's hit play, let's see what we got. Okay, not too bad. 
Now, like I said, uh, we're not doing deforming in this video. Uh, that's for another video. Uh, but basically, what deforming means is as soon as the ball hits the ground, it's going to be squished somewhat. Uh, as it raises up to uh, go into the next arch, it will stretch out and so forth. So that uh, squash and stretch is one of the principles of animation. That's something I will certainly cover in the next video. Uh, but this is to get you guys started, right? So hopefully the video was helpful. If you got any questions, please let me know. Thank you so much for watching. If you got any requests, let me know in the comments and see you guys next time. Bye. Well, thanks for watching. And before you go, please hit that MH button to subscribe, okay? See you guys next time. Bye.